Hi, this is Daniel Ryan, and this is Odessa After Dark, episode number 46. On this episode of Odessa After Dark, special correspondent Justin Wilson will bring you the story of the unsolved murder of Umberto Palma Jr., who was killed three years ago this week. And right now I'm here at Odessa High School, where on September 30th at 7.30 we'll have the ninth annual West Texas Talent Search Finals. And so we'd like for you to come out and join us and vote for your favorite to win. Over $6,000 worth of cash and prizes will be given away that night, and it'll be a wonderful night of local entertainment. And so let me um, send it over now to Mr. Justin Wilson. Hello there, it's Justin Wilson, and I'm standing on Keystone and 23rd Street, where three years ago this week, Umberto Palma Jr. was shot and killed in broad daylight. The neighbors uh, were said to have heard a few gunshots and then came outside, uh, rendered aid to Umberto, called the police. Um, the Odessa American reported that he only had one one wound to the head, uh, so multiple shots, one, one wound. Um, and to this day, the police have not been able to find out what happened, who did this, or where to go next. So there are a few theories as to what might have occurred on September 29th, 2014 um, regarding Umberto Palma Jr. Um, one of those being, could it be road rage? Um, it may be something more serious, like a, a personal attack, maybe not a personal attack. Um, but basically we need the public's help in order to uh, find out more on this um, and to discuss more. Uh, we're going to go to Daniel Ryan and Susan Rogers of Odessa Crime Stoppers. Okay, welcome back. Um, we continue to talk about the case of Umberto uh, Palma Jr., um, who died on September 29, 2014, so uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And so um, there, there's some questions that I have to ask you uh, about. And, and so to be shot in the middle of the afternoon, in the middle of the street, in your truck, um, I mean, just seems amazing that nobody has come forward with some information because he's in the middle of the street. Yeah, well, and that's true. And this is one of those tips that really, I mean, one of those cases that really has been unusual all along the way. We didn't get tips on this for, for the whole first year that all of this went on. Um, basically, that's what happened. He was in his vehicle, and, and of course he gets shot in his vehicle. There's There's um, been different scenarios that the police department has talked about as to what exactly happened, and no one really knows, I guess, at this point what's happened. Um, but, you know, again, like you're saying, it's one of those that somebody had to have seen something. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just almost unbelievable. Of course, you know, if, if you happen to be in that neighborhood and you heard the shot and you went out, of course, you could have gone out, you know, after everything happened, you know, they're just, you know, if the circumstances are right, maybe they were the only people in the middle of the street. I mean, maybe they were the only people there when it, when it happened. And I know, um, his family very much still wants closure in this. They are very active in keeping the case um, out front and in the public's uh, eye. Um, we've done that numerous times over um, since it's happened. Um, and it's just one of those that um, very nice family um, that we're dealing with. Um, um, well, there is a Facebook uh, page devoted to his memory and still on the where you can um, write condolences as far as um, uh, where his obituary was left. People still, um, the last one was about a month ago, saying where well, they still miss him and stuff. So obviously um, his family was uh, really close. I mean, he lived with his brother. Um, and so this is uh, a real weird, unfortunate case. Um, do we know? So he was shot why he was inside the truck. I believe so. Okay. And there was one thing I asked you about 
that the Odessa American reported was that there was a pile of clothes next to him. Um, and this is something that you didn't... It's nothing that I have knowledge of. Okay. Yet. Well, because, uh, you know, if one of the possible scenarios is, scenarios is road rage, um, you think you would get out of your uh, truck and confront the person and then say, um, uh, be shot. And so um, it's just a real curious case that this, um, it was off of 23rd Street or on to, to a, about the 1200 block of 23rd Street on September 29th. And so it would be like school was still uh, in session. It just started probably a month previously. Mm -hmm. Um, the fair would be over with, um, it would be nice days um, in Odessa, and so just in the middle of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So is there anything in the, um, in the paper that, uh, that helps that we haven't covered? Not really. Um, you know, again, it was in the middle of the day. Um, we feel like there was somebody that knew something about it. Um, it's just a really strange case to have never received a single tip in, that, in those, those early days on. I think the police have gotten a little bit of information on it since then and have worked on the information that they've gotten in. But, you know, like you said, real real odd circumstances to have have something like that happen at that time of the day, you know, in a, in a pretty well-populated area and not know more than we know. Well, do you know how far away that was from his house? I do from, not. From where he lived? I do not. Okay. Because from what the newspaper said, his brother um, left um, to go pick up his children. And when he came back, his brother, Alberto, wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And so to pick up your children, you know, maybe how long? 20, 30 minutes? Yeah. Um, if, depending on their age and what school. And so in that span of 20 or 30 minutes, um, Alberto left and, and got shot. So um, this was, so if it was road rage, it escalated really fast. And this person is out there. Um, since you've dealt with a lot of uh, crimes, um, most people, from what I read, and you can back this up, um, are not multiple murderers. Most of the people that we're looking for just killed one person, and that's all they'll ever, ever do their whole life. Right. Um, and so. Does that make it harder to, well, I mean, if you killed a bunch of people, it'd probably be really easy to find you. So, <laughs> If you're a serial killer, yeah, we would, we would it, hope. You know, it, it gets to be easier. It's just, uh, if if you've killed somebody, do you think you, like, straightened up your whole life and saw the light, like, oh, my God, he's dead. Um, and so, I, I mean, how how do you investigate these uh, these things if... If it's one of those cases where they, this person's never done anything wrong again. Well, you know, the investigators that are over at the Odessa Police Department, which is who has this case right now, are very um, well trained and, and know their job very well. So they take those leads. I mean, the guys that we have over there working the person's cases right now, they get out and they do footwork. And they knock on doors. They, they talk to neighbors. They, they, they turn over every stone to see what they can find. Um, so, you know, in their training and, and what they do over there, they, they take it very seriously. Um, this is still, you know, a very open case for them. They, um, you know, look at things that come in, um, pick up that case to look at it. Um, there was a, a female detective that's no longer over there right now, but she, um, she, she really looked into the things that went on with this case and took it. You know, it, it's hard not to take things. Um, I'm not meaning take them personally, but take them to heart. And, mm -hmm. you know, you get to know those family members and you get to talk to them. And, and you know, those, those people over there that are investigating those cases, they want to solve them as bad as that family wants it solved. You know, it becomes a part of them and, and they live with that. And so, you know, I know there was a lot of work done on this case. Um, it's just one of those that, we, you know, has come up to a dead end and we need, we need some help if the public's got any information on that case. Um, we, we um, you know, I would plead with you um, to come forward on that case. Um, the family members that we're dealing with, um, I know that they've, they've had to go on with their lives. Um, it's just what you have to do, but they, they haven't forgotten. I know there's probably not a minute goes by that they don't think about him. And a um, uh, real tight, close-knit family, um, and they want, um, they want closure on that. Well, if this was a TV show, whoever did this would use the gun again, and we'd match ballistics, and, you know, it'd be solved all in... 59 minutes mm -hmm. and, and such and so it doesn't work that way here um, and so they'll know what type of gun was used um, and that's basically all the information until somebody says something mm -hmm. 
and points in a, a direction of like I saw this car or I saw this person or this person looked this way um, and so even when you have video sometimes it's still hard to get tips right right because you know um, you know and a lot of people have video these days and, I, and, and some video is good video some video is not good video sometimes you know you think I mean we'll look at a piece of video when we're looking for for something and be reviewing that video and, and you'll see the car come by and I mean you get within inches of seeing the tags on the car and it just didn't catch it in that clip and you just don't have it. Um, I don't believe there's anything in this case that they're able to follow up on that but you know again it was in the middle of the daytime there were people around there were things going on um, you know and there's been a lot of talk about it that's mm -hmm. the other part of that you know it's been in the public it's been in the public quite a bit we put up billboards we've done you know all and you kinds did the of things. digital one on we uh, did the digital yeah. billboards we, we've tried to keep it out there and people talk I mean that's just the way it is it, it's hard for someone who's done something like this to take this to their grave I mean they talk people talk so if you if you've heard somebody say something even though you may not think it amounts to much it could be something that law enforcement can can match up with with what they're doing and look into so um, again, you know, people talk about this. He, he was a very well-liked person, um, so he had a lot of friends. His family um, is, is um, very close. Um, most of them live here. Um, people know who they are. So if you've heard, you know, anything, um, we need that information so that the investigators can actually take a look at it and rule it, rule it out or look further into it. Well, and so anything that happened the week of September 29th, um, might be helpful in this case to just to get a pattern of uh, behavior or who his associates were or somebody who might have popped into his life um, like in the other case that we were talking about Teresa Wagner mm -hmm. you just don't know how all the dots connect until you get a, until you get the puzzle pieces exactly exactly and so so anything that can be provided um, they'll pass on to law enforcement and they can decide whether it's a, a credible tip or not, or something that they can use. But as you were saying, the first year you got no tips, so anything that you could get at this point would be uh, would be good. Yeah. Okay. So um, the number is once again three 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 T I P S, or there's an app, or you can go on to what's the the app is called P three tips. P three tips. Uh -huh.